Hello team and welcome to another Levi Save the World Hildebrand episode. Why did you say hello team? I don't know. Got him shook. Hey team, welcome to another Levi Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. Today, we're gonna do a Q&A with all of you answering questions that you submitted to us via Instagram. So this is a great opportunity for us to answer some of those questions that you've had and not make a full length video about it because the questions are really diverse, but we're really excited to answer them. So here we are, jumping right into it. What do Canadians think about how the US is doing? Be that politics, climate change, COVID. Obviously we won't speak for all Canadians, but I would say for most like left-wing progressive Canadians, we're a bit shook. It's, it's hard not to be pessimistic about the future of America. It seems to be people are getting more and more divided instead of coming together. And that's the opposite of what needs to happen. Yeah, we need to, we need to find community and build community. And it seems like the individualism of the United States and the freedom that is so entrenched in the culture is actually their downfall at this point. On a sunnier note, how did you two meet? We got a whole bunch of questions asking about how Leah and I met, and we are fortunate enough to have met not on Tinder. We are- There's nothing wrong with meeting on Tinder. We are one of the few <laughs> who uh, managed to make uh, a connection before Tinder was the only way to do so, and I think that Tinder matches are fine, but uh, there's something special about meeting- IRL. When you're drinking in a bar, you know? Just like <laughs> the good old days. It was at a really good friend of ours. It was at his birthday party and in walks this very loud, good looking person who sits down across from me. And our buddy, Darren, was like, you've never met Levi before? I was like, uh, no. How did you not introduce me to this? Mm, yummy. I decided that day, like that night that I met Levi, that uh, he was gonna be with me. Leah pursues quite fiercely. I don't normally. I've never done that before in a relationship. I was very tenacious. Another really popular question for some reason is about pets and whether or not we're gonna get one. And if you do, will it be a dog or a cat? Leah and I are fairly transient people at this time in our lives. Um, we move a lot. We're traveling all the time. We have a work-life balance that is pretty hectic and a dog or a cat has never really fit into that because we don't want to feel tied down by that animal and also not be able to provide for it the kind of life that we think that an animal should have. Like the dog or the cat thing? Dog. Yeah, definitely a dog. Definitely a dog. Levi and I say that if we were to be an animal, Levi would be a, a cat. cat and I would be a dog. Definitely. Okay, now we are moving on to professional questions. What are the drawbacks of working on YouTube? Do you miss the social aspect of a traditional job, the financial certainty, and how do you not get sick of each other all day long? YouTube is definitely the best job that I've ever had and probably the best job I ever will have. I don't miss the social aspects. I am a very social person. Leah and I have a huge social network of people and family and friends. And I am actually kind of an introvert when it comes to social settings. I can do them, I enjoy them, but I get exhausted of them pretty quickly. I worked service industry for almost a decade. So like serving and bartending, and sometimes I miss that, but I talk to so many different people a week, still with, with my job. And how do you not get sick of each other? So Leah and I work together at home every single day, but we are doing different things. Mm -hmm. I would say, 20 to 30% of my time is working with you, but the other 70 is I'm doing other stuff. We both work from home, but I have another job. What is something that you would like to accomplish in the next five years, either individually or together? Something that we have been talking about um, is a completely sustainable home. Once we move into this apartment, we're going to live there for a little while. We're going to enjoy that space and we're gonna live our lives, but eventually we hope to invest in some kind of property and Land. cultivate it into a super sustainable house. We're gonna build it. We're gonna do all of the work to make it as eco-friendly as possible. And we're gonna bring all of you along for that journey. So, you know, hit that subscribe button. What do you see as our future energy source? Solar, wind, hydro, etc. 
I I've said this multiple times, and if you follow me on Twitter, I rant about this constantly. There is no one solution. We are dealing with a global problem. We are collectively going to need to address it. So yes, solar, yes, wind, yes, geothermal, yes, hydro, yes to nuclear, yes to everything that we can possibly throw at this problem because that's what we need. Why did you choose to buy the apartment that you got? So we're going to make a whole video about this mm -hmm. in the future and really break down why we bought this apartment. So hit that subscribe button and hopefully you will see that coming to you soon. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully soon. Out of our hands. <laughs> oh my God. What has it been like living slash working with your in-laws? We pride ourselves on being very flexible people and being malleable in different environments, but that does come with compromise. We aren't able to live the lives that we normally lead. And yeah, that's, that's challenging. You might've noticed here on the channel, we're making content about a bunch of different stuff because we aren't in the place where we normally live and breathe every single day. Of course, it's quite interesting, you know, being an adult with your husband, <laughs> living with your parents. Um, I feel a bit like I've gone back 10 years, but it's actually been really nice because both of my parents are able to work full time. So we're able to find a really nice work balance between the four of us. Honestly, we're so lucky that we get along with our parents because this would have been a lot more difficult. Absolutely. Holy smokes. <laughs> and that actually, I think, ladders into this next question, which is, are there any current practices that aren't very eco-friendly? Well, because we are living in a smaller town than what we normally live in, we're using the car a lot more. Public yeah. transit is not really as good here, but it's a really hilly city, so it's also really hard to ride your bike. The way that we shop has had to change significantly because we're living in a group setting and Ultimately, this isn't our house, so we buy the things that we would like to eat, but there's also just differences in packaging and different grocery stores that we don't have access to while we're living here. My dad loves Costco. Yeah, Paul loves He's Costco. He's obsessed so. with Costco. Okay, now we are getting into the stuff that probably a whole bunch of you are interested in knowing about, and that is the <laughs> personal questions. Uh, so right before we get into this, I think I want to mention that like, we create a world on YouTube. We carefully came in here and removed a bunch of mess from this room so that it looks clean and normal. So <laughs> there is a side of our relationship that is not shared publicly. And I think that a lot of people know that, but I also think it's easy to forget as well. I think it's easy to look at people online and especially couples and think that they have this fairy tale life and relationship but obviously we're real people with real conflicts and other things so i hope this will give you a bit of an insight into that yeah um even though you know on here we're like ooh, lights nice red couch like leah did her makeup i did i put on makeup i put on pants explain being married three times and how do you work on a healthy relationship so we got married three times inadvertently we got surprise married the first time we arrived in Leah's parents' backyard with my parents and surprised them with a minister. Yeah, we just said, this is the person who's gonna marry us. So it was just our immediate family. And I'm so glad we did it that way. There was yeah. no expectation on what that day was gonna be like, and it was perfect. It basically created the kind of environment that I think people forget about when they know they're gonna get married, which is we are connecting our lives together and the people who are in it on either side. So we just said, do you want to do this as long as we can? And we both said yes. Oh God, you're so cute. The second, second wedding we did was almost a year later and we decided to celebrate with our friends. So for those of you who don't know, Levi and I actually used to work at a lot of weddings. I would bartend them, he would film them. So for many years, that's how we made a lot of our money. And we had been to so many where people just felt really overwhelmed. And we wanted a space where we could just hang out with our friends. So we went camping, we booked a campsite and we had three nights and it was awesome. Like it was just the perfect way to relax with our friends and be reminded of this community that we've been building together. 
Our third marriage was with the family that we have and very close long-term friends who happen to be in the area. It took place at Leah's family home, had an elaborate party we hosted and had food for everyone. But instead of having to include all of those other aspects and feel rushed to see every single person who was there, we got to enjoy it for three times as long. We actually wanted to have a fourth wedding this year, um, but COVID sort of compromise that. The purpose of us having potentially a fourth wedding and maybe a fifth or a sixth wedding <laughs> is instead of focusing on a wedding as a one-time sealing of vows is to create this reoccurring commitment that you make to each other every single year. You know, it isn't like this big grandiose one day thing. It's something that every year and hopefully every day we try and celebrate the fact that we chose to be together and we chose this life that we're building it's, it's a constant reminder that what we're doing is evolving it's changing mm -hmm. um something that i think is so fascinating about the idea of having multiple marriages is that or not multiple marriages <laughs> i mean that's interesting too i that, mean who knows very interesting to get married to the same person multiple times is to reassess how your life has changed over that year even from the first wedding to our second and third weddings you could see how the friends who were there had changed how families had evolved how the world around us had changed as well and these sort of milestones put your life and your context and perspective. It's not only about the two of you having a healthy relationship. You can't just rely on this one person to provide everything that you need. And instead, we have a lot of really close friendships and relationships with our family that help us support each other, but then also feel fulfilled as people, as whole people. And on a similar note, what are our favorite foods? <laughs> we, ah. um, spaghetti. Mm. Pie. Pizza. Tacos. Oh, tacos. I love tacos. Oh, so the, we got this question from somebody. It's very specific. Um, he says, my wife, like Leah, identifies as bisexual. Has it raised any challenges that you've needed to work through as a couple? Well, just quickly say, like, for people who don't know what it means to be bisexual, it just means that you are um, sexually attracted, romantically interested in more than one gender. So I'm interested yeah. in men, women, non-binary folks, whichever. Leah said right off the bat when we decided that we were going to get married that she was bi, and uh, that didn't bother me at all. I, I think that where issues come up when it comes to somebody in the relationship being bisexual is not about the issue of bisexuality itself, but the trust that you share as an, a unit. Do you trust that person? What are the qualities about that person that you respect and that you want in your life? And does them being bisexual affect that? And for me, it was no, it, it, Leah is Leah. The, the, the way that she identifies in the world or chooses to love is, is not really something that I think affects our relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's constantly evolving. We've uh, experimented in the past and <laughs> it's fun. It's a heart opening, vulnerable experience. Yeah, it's, it is challenging for sure. It, it's not, Easy because I think that we are conditioned to think about sexuality and relationships in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. It's not like being bisexual automatically means that, you know, I want to have multiple partners or I walk down the street and I'm like, they're hot, they're hot, they're hot. That's, that's not yeah. really how it works. The same issues can come up in straight couples. They can come up in queer couples. I feel very seen in the relationship and I've never felt like I've had to hide the fact that I'm bisexual, even though I can walk through the world as a straight passing person. And that's something that I really value about our relationship and Levi just being so, uh, so open and loving of who I am as a person. In terms of another very specific question for me, uh, Leah, what's your opinion on the bidet as a female? Yes, I, I am a female. I have a vulva. Uh, 
I really like the bidet. Yeah, I, I love the bidet too. The bidet is awesome. And the great thing about the bidet is that, I mean, obviously it's great for your bum, but as someone with a vulva, it's very fresh. It's just like a nice, refreshing, it's like splashing your face, but you know, your vulva. <laughs> And you know what's awesome is that we have a link in the bio. You can get 10% yeah. off a tushy bidet. Leah's parents even have a bidet. We're converting the whole family. Do you two want kids? If so, how will minimalism and sustainability transfer to having children? We made a whole video about having kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check it out. Link will be in the description. To summarize, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have the intention of raising children with our values, of course, and mm -hmm. the ways that those things are going to manifest is going to be very interesting because it is, from what I can see on the outside, a challenging experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be difficult in some ways to be eco-friendly parents and be minimalist parents, but I think that's because so much of our society is telling us that in order to be a good parent, you need to consume things or give things to your children constantly. And we don't really buy into that ideology, so. I'm actually really looking forward to pushing back on a lot of the ideas around raising a child. I, I have a lot of confidence right now and audacity <laughs> as somebody who doesn't have a kid and who isn't dealing with a screaming child right now. But I think that toy culture is just absurd mm -hmm. and that the way that children are kind of inundated in sensory overload from everything that they could possibly want is totally unnecessary. So I, I don't know how this is going to manifest, but I am pretty committed that I am not going to have a house absolutely filled with toys. So we'll see. We'll see. That's a part of the five-year plan as well. Yes, that is also a part of our five-year plan. We, we will probably have kids within the next five years. That's crazy to think about. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's how we feel about it. <laughs> you gotta start making some more money. Ooh. I think a great way to summarize this section is a question that we got, which is, what is Leah's podcast about? Give You have to give them the tagline. I give you the tagline. The Love Doctor, research-informed advice that can lubricate any conversation about sex. You're way too pleased with yourself. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, I recently finished my PhD and I use art and different mediums to talk about sexual health. And of course, in this pandemic world, podcasting, it's the way to go. I can connect to people, me to you, around the world. <laughs> Something that I really like about this podcast is that it is an accessible place. I think a lot of people have predisposed ideas about sexuality, about relationships, and Leah's podcast is like my YouTube channel, but for sexual health. The whole point is that I want it to be as accessible as possible, regardless of how you identify, of what your sexual orientation is, but it's just getting people to talk more openly about sex. That's the whole point. So on that note, I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you actually made it through the entire thing, wow. Thank well, you. Well done, yay. If you want to see more Q&A content like this, we post a monthly Q&A on our Patreon page. You can find that through the link in the description as well. There's a bunch of awesome behind the scenes content there as well for your viewing pleasure. And if you are subscribed to this channel, which you very much should be, then we will see you in the next one. See you later, everyone. Bye.